ME627 nonlinear vibrations today we will do an example of nonlinear vibrations and we will try to do some kind of analytical approximation for it and what we will find is that although this is a simple problem this can be complex and so calculations by hand are difficult and you should use maple or mathematica as for your choice this is also going to involve the simple pendulum which is something basic and we should know it so here it is here is a simple pendulum that's a pivot point this is a wall this angle is theta that is l this mass is m and there is gravity what we will do is we will take a unit vector er in this direction and a unit vector e theta in this direction we can draw a free body diagram of the mass that is mg in this direction and t tension in this direction one of the things we can do is this force we can resolve in this direction and this direction and when we do we must of course cut it off and then scratch that one off and then this component is mg sine theta you may also remember that the acceleration of this mass is equal to minus l theta dot square e r plus l theta double dot e theta and therefore linear momentum balance says minus m g sine theta is equal to m l theta double dot when we take acceleration linear momentum balance in that direction this is the equation of motion for a simple pendulum and you can see that the mass cancels out okay so we have <coughs> theta double dot plus g over l sine theta equals zero very good remember this is unforced undamped all right this pendulum has three kinds of motions one is you release it at some angle that is not vertical and then it oscillates to a symmetrical position and then goes back again this is the oscillatory solution there is an unstable solution and if there is a small perturbation then it may be on this side it may go like this and then come back like this and take a long time to do it or it may go round and round and round because of that perturbation there is a whirling solution in this one it just goes round and round so it goes round and round it is slow here and fast here but it has a whirling solution okay we are interested in these solutions in particular we are interested in the initial condition theta at 0 is equal to theta 0 theta dot at 0 is equal to zero what is the time period okay now we will make a small transformation here in this equation we will say let t be equal to omega tau then d of anything dt is equal to one by omega of that same thing 
by d tau which we will write as anything dot is equal to 1 y omega that same thing prime when we do that then our equation becomes theta double prime plus sine theta equals 0 for omega equals square root of L by G. And so when we solve this problem, we have really solved it for all L, all G and all M. Okay, so this problem, this problem with these initial conditions, what is the time period? Okay, this time period is going to be in tau time then we will multiply by omega to get the time period in original physical variables the way to find the time period there is a standard trick which uses energy if you like there are other names for it doesn't matter so theta double prime plus sine theta equals 0 what we do is we multiply by theta prime this is the perfect derivative of theta prime square by 2 this is the perfect derivative of minus cos theta because we have integrated there is an integration constant by initial conditions that constant is minus cos theta 0 theta prime therefore is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2 the square root of cos of theta minus the cos of theta 0 by plus or minus because theta itself has an oscillatory solution and so there is a phase when theta is decreasing and there is another phase when theta is increasing okay now although we started here we can come to this part of the solution and we can do an integral over this part this time period is t by 4 during this phase theta goes from 0 to theta 0 okay therefore we use blue d theta by the square root of cos theta minus cos theta 0 integrated from 0 to theta 0 is equal to the square root of 2 t by 4 this is what we are going to try to find to find this this integral actually does not have a closed form solution and the best way to do it at this time is to go to maple in maple what we will do is we will say theta is equal to theta 0 u then d theta is equal to theta 0 du and so what we will then have is the integral from 0 to 1 theta 0 du over the integral I'm um, sorry square root of cos theta 0 u minus cos theta 0 and this is going to be square root of 2 t by 4 now let us go to maple and here is maple and I am going to start here by saying f1 is equal to 1 by the square root of cosine of theta 0 times u minus the cosine of theta 0 let me put the theta 0 in the numerator also that's f1 this has to be integrated from 0 to 1 let me show you that maple can actually do a lot of integrals for example 1 by square root of 1 minus u square it can do that integral 
but when we are interested in this integral then it will have trouble u equals 0 to 1 So it, you know, it wants to know various things. Let us not mess with that. So we'll come here and comment this line out. And we will come here and then we will say, let's expand the integrand. And so we will say f2 is equal to series f1 theta 0 equals 0 that means small values of theta 0 let, let us go to this order and when we do we have found one leading order behavior then some other complex term which you can possibly simplify but we won't bother times theta 0 plus something theta 0 to the power 4 we want to drop this thing here and the way to do that is to say convert to a polynomial this is just maple syntax here when you do that it gets rid of that other term this one can can be integrated u going from 0 to 1 so we will say integrate f2 u equals 0 to 1 when we do that we got an answer here we will say eq is equal to this previous is equal to square root this equal to has a colon equals that means by define that will be a defining this is the previous result this eq this equal sign is something in maple it's just a symbol it means we're dealing with an equation okay square root of 2 times t by 4 okay so now I've got that and I say solve that for t okay now if I take the 2 pi common then you see that it is 1 plus theta 0 square by 16 okay so if I go back here what I will write is t is equal to 2 pi 1 plus theta 0 square by 16 plus dot 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 okay that is the answer I've got how accurate is it it's good to check we can check how accurate it is so for example I can say capital F is equal to substitute theta 0 equals 1 it's one radian um, in in what in um, wait solve this one let me give t solution equals let me come here and say digits equals 16 i want numerical calculations to 16 digits this means restart from so just starting everything again. Now I go to F1. And there I am substituting theta 0 is equal to 1 in, in F1. Then I say integrate F u equals 0 to 1 okay so it it is giving me something this is some elliptic function i have to evaluate it numerically so well maple will do it for me it will give me an answer right this is equal to square root of 2 times t by 4 so actually i will come here come here and evaluate that again okay so now I'm getting 6.69997 
okay now if I come here and I say substitute um, theta 0 equals 1 in T solution got a slightly different 6.68 6.69 remember that the difference is 6.28 I mean the difference is from 6.28 right 2 pi is 6.28 so actually this is quite accurate we can of course go back here and we can uh, make this a higher order approximation then it will be a bit better so let's do that that's longer we can only do these things because we have maple otherwise if we are clever we can still do these if we are skilled analytically but uh, So now you see, um, this is the exact answer essentially, and this is the T solve, this is the series answer. Now we have four terms, and now it's a lot more accurate. Okay, so this is the sort of approximation we can make if we make a straightforward attempt, but there are going to be other things we will study. We could also take a MATLAB approach and you will be doing that in some cases so in MATLAB what you would do is you will choose theta 0 numerically then you will integrate and that will be theta 0 you don't want to detect the point of 0 slope but uh, there will also be a theta dot curve which will be crossing zero at this point and there will be finitely many points so it won't exactly hit zero where you want but you can pull out those points and see what they are and you can make a linear approximation using two points or a parabolic approximation using three points and find the point of zero crossing okay so that is a full numerical solution okay all right that's the end of this lecture